Hello and welcome back to SciTi Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this very useful stir bar device with using a very simple voltage regulator circuit. Let's get started. And these are the items that you're going to need to make for this project. And this right here is the schematic that you're going to need to follow to make the circuit. If you want, you can pause this video to make the circuit yourself, or watch the video to see step by step on how I made it. The items you're going to need is this neodymium magnet, a perf board, these rings and nut that will connect to your potentiometer, and this knob which will connect to the potentiometer to control the speed of the circuit. The main component is an LM317 voltage regulator, a 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a 104 nanofarad ceramic capacitor, and a 680 ohm resistor, and a 12 volt DC computer cooling fan, and of course, a 12 volt DC power supply to be able to power the circuit, and these pieces of cardboard which will be for the housing of the circuit. First, I want to start with a 104 nanofarad ceramic capacitor and connect it to my perf board. Place it right here, just like this. And then I'm going to take my potentiometer and place it right here, just like this. And there we go. Next, I'm going to take my LM317 voltage regulator and place it right here, just like this. Next, you're going to take your 680 ohm resistor and connect it to the adjust pin and output pin, which is the left pin and center pin. Next, you're going to take your 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, where you'll have the negative facing the left and the positive facing the right, just like this. And there we go, everything all into place. Now it's time to solder everything together. Next, I'm soldering a 680 ohm resistor to the center of the potentiometer and is connected to the adjust pin of the voltage regulator. Cut off the excess. Next, I'm going to take a bridge wire and connect it to the positive of the electrolytic capacitor to the center pin of the voltage regulator, which is the output. There we go, just like that. And now I'm taking another bridge wire and connecting the negative of the electrolytic capacitor and connecting it to the right pin of the potentiometer. There we go, just like that. And there we go, should look just like this. Next, I'm going to take this bridge wire and I'm going to solder it to the input or positive of the voltage regulator and connect it to the ceramic capacitor. There we go, just like this. Solder it into place and then solder bridge it to the capacitor. And now solder the other bridge wire. There we go, and bend the input lead of the voltage regulator and solder bridge it together. Cut off the excess, and there, it should look just like this. Next, I'm going to take this negative bridge wire and create the common ground. I'm going to solder the negative of the ceramic capacitor to the other electrolytic capacitor's negative, and the negative of the potentiometer. And there we go, common ground is connected. Next, I'm going to take these stripped wires that came from the 12 volt power supply, and I'm going to solder those to the ceramic capacitor. That side is positive, and the other side is negative. Connect it over just like that, and that will be my power source for the input. Solder bridge it together, just like this. There we go, just like that. The input is now created. And it should look just like this. I have my fan right here, and this will be the output. I'm going to connect the negative to the common ground, and then the positive to the positive side of the electrolytic capacitor. Place it in just like this, solder it into place, and then solder bridge it to the positive of the electrolytic capacitor. There we go, solder it in place. Now I have a problem right here, I need to bridge over the negative to the common ground but I can't get past the positive. So what I'm going to do is solder it in place, cut off the excess, and I'm going to get a bridge wire and solder it to the common ground. Bridge it over, 
and there, now the fan is grounded to the common ground. And there, the circuit is now complete. Now, let's go ahead and test it out. Ah, success. Good, we know it works. And now it's time to build the housing for this circuit. I have my cardboard already pre-cut and it's ready to assemble. First, I'm gonna glue my circuit to the fan. There we go, glued in just like this. Next, I'm gonna put some hot glue on the side of the fan. And then glue the side panel into place. Next, I'm gonna put some hot glue to glue the circuit to the panel and put some more hot glue underneath to make it more secured. Now I'm going to put some hot glue on this side of the panel and put the back panel in. There we go, just like that. Now take the second side panel, cut out a little notch for the cable, place it underneath just like this, glue the side, and there, it should look just like this. A little bit of hot glue for the wire so the wire doesn't come out. And there, it should look just like this. And now I'm making a mark for the front panel so I know where the potentiometer is going to come out. Make a hole just like this. Make the hole a little bit bigger for the potentiometer to slip through. And there we go, the potentiometer fits. I'm gonna place this washer in the potentiometer, then the panel, then the nut, put some hot glue to glue the front panel to the circuit, and glue in the corners to make it extra secured. And there, now it's time to place the knob into place. Put my finger behind the potentiometer, so that way the potentiometer doesn't bend and break. And push the knob into place. And there we go, it's connected just like that. Next, I'm going to put a large amount of hot glue on the fan, so that way I can place the magnet into place. The reason why it's a large amount of glue is to hold the magnet into place so it doesn't fall out. Because when the fan is spinning, the magnet's going to slightly vibrate, and it's a risk that it could fly off the fan. Make sure it's centered by adjusting it just like that. And there, it should look just like this. And there we go. I'm gonna go ahead and take these top panels, place it just like this. Make sure the magnet's in the center of these panels so then that way I can be able to put my beaker and a stir rod. And that way I know where the center is. Glue it all into place. And there you have it. The project is now complete. Now let's go ahead and test it out. I have right here a beaker of water. I have my stir bar. And now let's go ahead and test it out. Ah, success.
And there you have it. Now you know how to make your very own stir bar with using just a few simple components and using a voltage regulating circuit. And there you have it. Thank you for watching SciTai Tech. I hope you learned something new and don't forget to like and subscribe and of course click on the bell icon to be notified for future SciTai Tech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye.